A very warm welcome. At Hyde Park tonight, we will discuss the tourism industry, the way forward for Sri Lanka's uh, biggest or uh, rather a major remittance earner for the country, the industry, where the industry goes from here, six weeks after the deadly Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka. And to discuss this, uh, we believe we've invited just the right person. A very warm welcome, Mr. Kishu Gomez. Thank you very much. Uh, you're now only heading the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau. You gave yes. up your um, authority over the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. This was shortly after the attacks. Yes, um, the, the reason being that uh, on both uh, fronts, uh, the work volume obviously, uh, you know, multiplied by, by many folds. Uh, so one person uh, trying to sort of, you know, deal with two would have taken a longer time for the country to be able to bounce back. Uh, so we had uh, a, a nice discussion with all relevant stakeholders and finally made the decision that uh, I would, uh, you know, be uh, the in charge of of uh, promoting the country, uh, you know, by managing the brand, uh, trying to get uh, the traction from the rest of the world, basically taking Sri Lanka out to the world and promoting it. And the uh, development authority had to basically take care of the regulatory you know, aspects of tourism. Uh, but uh, given Sri Lanka's situation for mm. years, we've seen that tourism development needed a lot of attention. Yes. But I believe when you were given this mm -hmm. uh, opportunity, mm -hmm. you, you call this an opportunity to serve the nation. Sure. But do you think at this time to give away the de development authority was the right decision? Well, uh, in the short term, yes, uh, because uh, product development, as you said, is, is key. Uh, no question about it, because it's all about competitiveness, right? How do we create a competitive tourism destination? So that's where development authority comes into play. But having said that, uh, given the circumstances we are in, given that uh, you know our, our brand is now kind of bleeding, uh, in order to revive that and to reposition it and to market it, uh, you know, you need a lot of time. Uh, and a and, and lot of thinking time, a lot of execution time, all of that. So I think from that perspective, uh, it's the right decision uh, because uh, uh, you should not be thinking about you know, yourself or, or just the industry, but you know, broadly the country. What is right for the country? What is right for the country is obviously adding more muscle uh, behind uh, strategy execution and ensuring that uh, you know, we are on a faster track in order to be able to recover. Let's talk about what is right for the country at this moment. Um, Sri Lanka was shook by these attacks. Yes, six weeks after, we're still trying to come to terms with what mm. really happened. And this has been uh, a time where we had renewed interest as a destination. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have uh, some new uh, branding going on and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of attention on the country. But here, in a moment, in a string of attacks, everything changes for the worse for the country. But how did you feel I'd like to start off? Because you had just taken office uh, for, uh, let's say, three months ago. You're right. Uh, it was a huge, huge uh, shock. And then it took a while, you know, for me to be able to comprehend it. Uh, you know, having so much, you know, experience uh, working for uh, the, the largest multinationals, uh, you know, in the world. For 33 and having years. 33 years and having been the CEO of one of the largest, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, listed entities in, in Sri Lanka. Uh, it was a shock uh, because it came in at a time nobody uh, anticipated anything of this sort, uh, right? Uh, so, so, but um, just over a couple of uh, hours time, um, I took, you know, a lot of power into me and, and, and wanted to react to it in the best possible manner. So by 2 p.m., uh, 3 p.m., I had the strategy uh, you know, uh, so very you were not scared mapped. about uh, what lies ahead. You were not worried because mm -hmm. the entire tourism industry. This is this is actually the lifeline of thousands in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So uh, attack took place around nine o'clock, as we all know, and uh, I was in office uh, by nine thirty. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the moment I heard it, uh, the first thing I did was to go to office. And I parked my vehicle. I didn't have the driver on that day. Parked my vehicle and, and crossed over to uh, Cinnamon Grand. Mm -hmm. And I just you know, spoke to a few people. And then you know, from there started moving, went to all three hotels. And in, in fact, you know, went to Kochikade Church as mm -hmm. well. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, while going, talking to people, coordinating with people, uh, got back into office, uh, you know, called all the, the right uh, people into office. And uh, some of the industry stakeholders, too, uh, came in and by uh, 3, 3.30, you know, we had a good meeting. And uh, at the meeting, um, you know, we had uh, you know, a lot of big personalities. And the uh, Honorable Minister was there as well. Uh, but I had the opportunity of basically conducting the entire meeting. Mm -hmm. And at that meeting, I, I basically, you know, described as to uh, how uh, we need to respond to the challenge and uh, what next steps that we need to follow, all of that. So I was, I was prepared, you know, just within uh, two to three hours time. The corporate Kisho coming into play. Into play and uh, what happened to the country is very, very unfortunate. Shouldn't have happened, but it happened. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, I'll tell you, I like the challenge. You are always someone who likes to take the challenge. Uh, what were your strategy? What did you, what really ran in your mind at the time? You said you brought together industry stakeholders. You chaired this meeting. You had a strategy in your mm. mind. Okay. What did you want to do? So it had a few steps. You know, first thing was to take care of the guests who were already in the country. Uh, so in that, uh, obviously, we had so many people, you know, dying. Uh, so we had to sort of, uh, you know, look into some of those needs. And then uh, those who got injured, uh, they were taken to four hospitals, uh, general hospital, a larger number, and then to two uh, private hospitals and another uh, public uh, hospital uh, in, in Kalubo Villa. Uh, so obviously, uh, we need uh, had to deal with uh, the, the, the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So one uh, first thing we did was uh, we went to all these hospitals and uh, at least the, the government hospitals and we made an offer. We said, if you're not too happy uh, with the level of comforts and, and medical attention you're getting, uh, we will transfer you all uh, to any private hospital you want mm -hmm. at our own cost. Right. Uh, but in theory, you know, we must be very, very happy with uh, the, the level of service of uh, these public hospitals, not a single foreigner uh, tourist wanted uh, uh, the transfer. We kept on talking to them over three, four days, not a single uh, individual wanted uh, a transfer because they were uh, very well looked after mm -hmm. uh, by uh, the, the public uh, hospital staff, uh, plus the medical attention was you know, at its best. So that was, that was one. And then obviously uh, you know, taking care of uh, the security of uh, all the hotels, uh, and then uh, looking into the needs of the three hotels uh, that came under, under attack. Uh, so, so those were the, the, the initial uh, priorities. And then of course uh, beyond that uh, we had to manage uh, communication you know what do we tell the rest of the world how do we message it uh, and and uh, you know in the in the modern world uh everything gets out uh, as and when they happen. Um, uh, so therefore, you know, uh, you have no reason to hide. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you have a reason to hide, you can't hide it. It's all, all there. It's all seen, visible, very transparent. Uh, so how do we then sort of, you know, manage those sentiments? Um, so we had a huge role to play there. So immediately uh, we spoke to uh, an ad agency um, and, and got their support uh, to, to do a, a kind of initiative initial uh, PR campaign, mm -hmm. uh, communication campaign, uh, you know, getting the right messages, using the right mediums, uh, taking those mes messages to the rest of the world, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, doing right communication uh, here locally uh, as, as well. Uh, so priorities, you know, kept changing mm -hmm. uh, as we progressed. Uh, as, as, as the situation kept developing. Kept developing, uh, yeah. So we had to sort of change gears mm -hmm. and, and um, uh, be focused on the, the priorities uh, at the given time. Right. Uh, I think what, uh, what the corporate world, mm -hmm. those who know about you, likes and uh, 
they, they admire about you is, is the level of focus that you and uh, that you give to a certain issue. Um, yeah. You were mentioning about the, the way that hospital staff, everyone, all mm. services uh, came together to respond to this emergency. Mm. But how did you see the response of the politicians, of the political uh, authority at, at the immediate aftermath of, um, of these Easter attacks, especially concerning tourism and how we save and mm -hmm. tell the world mm -hmm. that we have something in place to protect our visitors? Uh, well, um, the, the entire nation saw the reaction of uh, the politicians and, and uh, the public uh, express, you know, their point of view and, and, and they uh, obviously, you know, gave uh, their feedback uh, through various mediums. Uh, uh, and, and reflecting uh, back, I think um, we should have handled the situation in a, in a much better way. Uh, some of the initial things that were done, the way they were done, uh, weren't right. And uh, that actually uh, led to a situation where there were more doubts being created than diffusing the, the issue at that point of time. So does this mean we created more chaos uh, post-attacks? Yes, the attacks itself was a major blow to the nation, but then with the comments and the way they acted, politicians especially, we in the media, we, have, we constantly uh, broadcast and telecast certain statements made, but what kind of damage has this caused? I mean, you, you engage with these mm. authorities and agencies on a daily basis trying to revive this industry, in the promotion aspect especially. Well, I mean, uh, from from our perspective as as tourism, um, having basically spoken to the military and and the military intelligence, uh, uh, we were very confident that uh, situation uh, was going to be brought under control just over a couple of days. Um, so we had confidence, you know, coming from them, uh, uh, and 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 you know, using the substance we got from them, I guess we said the right thing. But uh, some other stakeholders, uh, you know, kept on doubting uh, what was going on and uh, creating more ambiguity, uh, you know, uh, creating a, a kind of an environment within which, uh, you know, there uh, would be more, more doubts, you know, than, than certainty. Uh, so those led to an uh, undesirable situation, which obviously as tourism we had to respond to. Were you angry? Were you, were you actually upset over, over the way uh, things were I happening? guess the entire country was uh, angry. Uh, not just uh, ourselves, uh, and, and we had to, in fact, you know, respond to the local people here as well. A uh, lot of people asked us as to why so-and-so said uh, what he said, uh, why didn't he say the way he said it. Uh, you know, some people said the right thing, but not, uh, you know, uh, in the right tone. Uh, the body language was uh, not, not aligned, it was misaligned. Um, facial expressions were, were not aligned. You know, there were a lot of issues uh, from from a public uh, relation, relations, you know, standpoint, uh, so obviously uh, they they uh, shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, just as much as we have to revive the industry, I think the tourism agency has to also save face in terms of the damage that was caused. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, I'd like to ask you. Uh, has there been any support from the politicians in order mm -hmm. to go towards this this uh, envisaged? Well, uh, support has been there right from the, the beginning, uh, but uh, being a government entity, uh, the, the processes, you know, you got to follow. Uh, I didn't see a situation where a country could respond to a calamity of this nature uh, using a different process, uh, given the seriousness, uh, you know, of the issue. Um, and, and it's the same same process that, that you have to follow. Um, when it comes to procurement, um, as far as you know, tourism decisions are, uh, are uh, you know, concerned, uh, it takes about you know, 40 days to, uh, you know, for you to be able to sort of go through the process to uh, obtain all the approvals and to execute it. Uh, so in a situation of this nature, you can't be spending that much time. Uh, so this country, you know, should have a system uh, when dealing with, you know, this kind of calamities and emergencies, 
uh, where you know one can fast track or follow a different process uh, to be able to make the decisions faster uh, in order to you know uh, deploy mitigating actions mm -hmm. uh, but these hotels large high-end hotels were targeted during these attacks uh, and we saw some of hi the high-end tourists their families some of the wealthiest people of the world had their families in Sri Lanka and they were victims mm. of this um, how how has how, are you happy with the kind of security the assurance we mm. give to these high-end hotels mm. because certain statements as we talk about political statements they came out saying no, we can't. We can't be uh, mm. providing security to all hotels because that's their responsibility. If mm. they do make money, but this obviously, I believe, went in as this was translated uh, negatively as a message. Sure, uh, it, it received the response it, it should have received. Uh, that statement should have been made, and uh, it is. The, the accountability of the government to ensure that every single place, be it a tourism location or otherwise, uh, to provide you know, safety and, and security. Uh, so it was a very bad statement uh, that was made by the person who made it. The PR campaign, mm -hmm. um, as you said, you looked at how we go forward beyond this, what's, what's happened in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's just, we, we hear news about uh, the PR campaign just being um, approved and the global marketing plan is approved. Uh, yeah, PR campaign um, is a proposal that we submitted immediately after uh, the attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took, uh, you know, this many it weeks. Took six uh, weeks. Uh, uh, to get it approved um, because uh, cabinet approval process itself uh, uh, is, is, is was was this plan this plan the uh, uh, framework itself did it need urgent implementation it needed urgent implementation uh, implementation you know no question about it it should have been implemented uh, implemented you know three days after the attack uh, but as as i said you know being a government entity uh, you know you still have to follow the same process cabinet approval process is the shortest you know one can follow in order to get something approved. If we were to follow the normal you know, procurement process, it would have taken you know, 40 days. But, but, so but this time... In an emergency as this, mm. uh, did you not request authorities that they meet earlier? Because this is uh, Sri Lanka, this is the third largest and fastest growing yes. uh, industry of Sri Lanka. So from my side, uh, you know, I did uh, what I could, you know, within my authority. I went to the extent of, uh, you know, doing a, a cabinet paper draft. Uh, obviously, the cabinet paper per se is done by the minister secretary. But uh, I, 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 I sat with uh, the ministry officials to write the document uh, and uh, that's the extent to which you know I, I uh, you know played my role, uh, but again um, you know there are translations you know you have to do. Uh, there are certain you know uh, protocols that you got to follow. Uh, so uh, the cabinet approval was you know just received just uh, two days ago. Um, the, you know having uh, uh, this this you know proposal being taken through, mm -hmm. you know that that process you know which is the shortest uh, you know uh, route one can use in order to get anything approved. Uh, so uh, this is the sixth week after the attack, uh, and and now you know we have to obviously come up with a refreshed uh, PR uh, plan because some of the uh, sentiments, um, um, the negative sentiments, have already been addressed through other mediums. Mm -hmm. uh, so now. Um, peer campaign uh, will have to take a different shape uh, in order to uh, basically raise the level of confidence amongst uh, all the targeted uh, you know countries and then uh, obviously uh, with the uh, global marketing agency uh, being appointed to a global marketing agency as the sentiments uh, you know get um, uh, improved, mm -hmm. uh, they will kick in with uh, the, the marketing campaign right. uh, in order to excite the entire world uh, to, to you know, inspire uh, the, the target audience to come take a look at Sri Lanka once more. Um, when you say PR campaign and mm. then you'll have to actually uh, have additions now, does this mean this will also have to go in for approval? No, actually together with uh, the PR campaign, uh, the advertising uh, proposal was also approved. Right. Uh, so, so therefore... Uh, so any changes do not need uh, further approval? No, no, not really. Not, not from uh, okay. the cabinet. Uh, you know, there will be some internal you know, approval processes that we have to still go through, but those are not issues. Those are you know, within our control. So, so 
considering the fact that it has taken six weeks for an mm. approval of a campaign that right. needed to be implemented immediately after these uh, attacks. Right. Uh, but Mr. Gomez also, uh, let's talk about the global agency mm -hmm. that you're recruiting. Mm -hmm. How competent are they? Well, this is a global agency. Uh, I can now you know, mention the name as well, given that it has been you know, approved by, mm. the, by the cabinet. It's JWT. JWT is you know, one of the, the largest uh, global uh, agencies in the world. They are the ones who did uh, the so Sri Lanka identity uh, you know, work as well. Uh, so they understand uh, the, the tourism brand in Sri Lanka. They understand uh, global you know, tourism industry. They've done enough uh, research. Uh, so, so therefore, they'll be able to uh, you know, make a kick start. Uh, but obviously, we're not making the start in a normal environment. It's a very different environment within which you know, we, have to, we have to now play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I cannot think of uh, any better agency than JWT, given that JWT has uh, already, you know, spent uh, so many, so many years mm -hmm. uh, in in studying uh, the global tourism industry, uh, Sri Lankan, you know, tourism industry, and done the work uh, they have done. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, uh, and and it is for you know six months only uh, uh, in the very. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I intend doing is um, uh, let JWT start on uh, this this job. And uh, two months into it, uh, we will, uh, you know, go through uh, a global uh, tender uh, once again mm -hmm. to select an agency for the next two to three years' time. Uh, so that gives us four months for us to be able to, you know, finalize another global agency uh, to take us, you know, forward, uh, you know, into the next three years. So they will continue to promote Sri Lanka uh, after the six-month period that JWT. JWT, operates. unless otherwise uh, they get re-elected mm -hmm. as the long-term. Uh, partner okay. uh, will end their term in, mm -hmm. in six months. Mm -hmm. How much are we talking about in terms of this particular PR campaign? Right. So for the for the PR campaign, uh, we are going to spend uh, 415 million mm -hmm. uh, rupees. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and for the global advertising campaign, uh, 500 uh, million. Okay. So both put together, 915 million rupees is uh, what we will invest. And the return that you envisage? Uh, well, uh, returns. Uh, some of the returns, you know, will be qualitative. Some will be uh, quantitative. Uh, in terms of quantitative ones, uh, obviously, uh, we want to get back to the level uh, we were at mm -hmm. uh, in 2018. Uh, we had uh, 2.3 million tourists coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, doing a 2.3 during uh, this year, repeating the same number this year, may not be uh, possible uh, or will not be possible. I must say that. But uh, at least at least, you know, two months from now, three months from now, if we can uh, start recording the average that we've been recording uh, during last day corresponding uh, period, uh, then that will be a good achievement, uh, you know, for the next uh, six months time. And then come uh, next year, obviously, uh, we will have to, you know, look at further growing the numbers in order to reach uh, the, the ideal numbers uh, we were chasing. Uh, prior to uh, the attack. Several countries have uh, softened their travel advice on mm. Sri Lanka. Uh, is this also an ongoing effort by your end, including the government? Um, and of course, the security forces are doing sure. uh, uh, majorly contributing to this by assuring us at hand that mm. there is um, security on the ground. Uh, but uh, still, mm. we, we see that this advice continues, although it's not as harsh mm. as earlier. Mm. W w how would you walk, work about this? Okay, so it is a collective effort, mm -hmm. you know, from our side as tourism. Uh, uh, I visited, uh, you know, few embassies and, and high commissions together with uh, the Honourable Minister. And um, I uh, also contacted, you know, few other um, ambassadors and, and high commissioners. Uh, so that was very, very uh, fruitful. And whenever we went, uh, we went with um, uh, a senior military uh, intelligence officer from uh, the Sri Lanka Army. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were prepared to, you know, make a compelling presentation. And these presentations, you know, went very well. And uh, uh, the leaders of all these missions uh, were very, very happy with uh, what they what they heard. Mm. Uh, but of course, you know, they had other concerns as well in terms of you know systems we have in place, uh, the network you know we have in place. You know, some of those things you know very sensitive uh, things. Um, but uh, it is you know through that effort that uh, we managed to convince all these countries to soften uh, the travel advisories. Uh, so so far, we have countries softening. Uh, the travel right. advisories and uh, 
um, we're being able to, you know, get that done, you know, just over one and a half months, uh, you know, which is an excellent achievement by any standard. Right, and um, I believe you have news of more countries that are willing to uh, go ahead and uh, relax their travel advice to their citizens. Yes, so I mean we needed this trend mm -hmm. uh, to to start, mm -hmm. and it has now started, mm -hmm. and all the big countries have you know already relaxed. Uh, you know, U.S., U.K., Germany, uh, India, China. I mean, there are large uh, geographies as well. Um, uh, Sweden, uh, Switzerland. Uh, so you know, all the big countries um, uh, have have uh, relaxed it. Uh, so uh, you know, with that, I'm sure over the next uh, couple of weeks' time, uh, everyone else will uh, you know either soften or withdraw their travel advisories. And uh, when some countries soften them, they said uh, this uh, advice is uh, you know just for, for several weeks, meaning uh, that you know at the end of that period they will you know further revise it. That revision can only be positive. Mm -hmm. uh, China, uh, especially, is 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 a target country where mm -hmm. we are uh, promoting and marketing our destination to the vast Chinese tourist mm -hmm. uh, opportunity. But uh, with with the travel uh, ban and mm -hmm. then uh, the advisories, and now they've softened. Uh, what sort of change are we seeing? Because that will really hurt our numbers mm. uh, if we have uh, Chinese tourists uh, decline in them. Uh, well, uh, in China, uh, we've been actually experiencing a, a decline even uh, before uh, the, the attack. Um, reasons can be many, mm -hmm. uh, but that's you know just a very very slight magnitude uh, decline that we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know it's a large geography, uh, almost one point you know three billion mm -hmm. population. Um, so small percentage increase there uh, would mean you know large numbers for us. Right. Uh, so obviously from that perspective, you know it's an important country, uh, and and for us uh, second largest uh, country. India is number one with uh, almost four hundred sixty thousand uh, tourists, mm -hmm. and uh, China uh, in two thousand eighteen was about uh, two hundred seventy thousand. Uh, so second largest uh, geography. So with them uh, relaxing, uh, I'm sure, uh, and, and and also. Uh, uh, with our hotels uh, making various offers mm. um, and even to foreigners you know you now offer 50 percent discounts right. you know Going as much as 60 65 70 percent and you know this is free that is free mm. uh, on yes. top of you know these uh, huge discounts given so obviously um, tourists in in uh, places like China and India do respond to these uh, uh, you know enhanced value propositions um, so they get tempted and we yes. get tempted as well we know uh, the natural human behavior so with that I'm sure uh, they will start uh, coming in uh, in large numbers and then you know just over a period of time they will forget the fact that there has been a bomb attack and things will be no one. Uh, there is renewed interest in Europe, uh, especially the United Kingdom, if mm. I'm not mistaken. Are we looking at a target in terms of attracting a larger European uh, uh, tourist uh, yes. component? Yes. From a strategic perspective, uh, Europe is uh, very important mm -hmm. uh, because that's where the margins are. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, uh, UK is uh, the third largest uh, geography for us. Uh, UK also um, you know, send us about 250,000 uh, tourists uh, per annum. And uh, they they uh, spend uh, on an average about uh, 10 days uh, uh, per visit right. as opposed to an Indian or Chinese spending uh, you know four to five days so from every aspect um, uh, Europe is you know more important uh, and uh, yeah so um, we have uh, a marketing plan in which uh, uh, we have different activities to be carried out, mm -hmm. uh, some very big activities, some you know small activities mm -hmm. in order to keep the brand alive in those markets. From now to end of the year, we have 55 um, uh, act events happening, um, 35 plus uh, uh, travel shows, um, almost 20 uh, road shows. And, and about 10 uh, consumer engagements. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all international events uh, that take place. Um, so we are taking part, uh, you know, in, at, at all these uh, events. And other than that, uh, 
if there are countries where we will not have anything planned as per the uh, annual marketing plan, and those are big countries, important countries, uh, we would obviously come up with a schedule, new one, in order to be able to cover those uh, you right. know markets over the next uh, two months' time. Mm -hmm. um, so we've you know looked at all possible uh, you know activities and 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 strategies in order to try and get the numbers back. Tourism, uh, the industry itself accounted for 4.4 billion US dollars of uh, foreign exchange uh, during 2018 alone and contributing 4.9% to GDP. This is very important, mm. especially when we talk, uh, talk about the growth uh, in terms of our economy. But um, Revenue-wise, what are we looking at, Mr. Gomez? Where do we go from here? Okay, so we had a target of uh, reaching five billion during 2019, uh, but now with the with the issue we're battling with, uh, five billion will not be possible. Um, but um, you know, based on uh, my own assessment, um, you know, looking at uh, the overall economy of the country, looking at other revenue uh, uh, generators or generations, uh, I believe that. Uh, you know, if we are unable to take this level from current 4.5 to 10 million over the next five years' time, we may not be able to achieve the economic goals that, that we have set for ourselves. Uh, the reason being that number one revenue generator for the country is uh, foreign remittances. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been declining over the past you know, couple of years. It's, it's around uh, 7 billion now. Right. And uh, second being um, apparel exports uh, is hovering around 5.5. And uh, that industry is being threatened uh, by a few, you know, countries like uh, Vietnam, to Myanmar, to Bangladesh, and some of the other uh, countries. Um, uh, and it has also been, you know, taking a hit. And as opposed to those two, tourism has been steadily growing over the past uh, three years. And uh, globally, uh, tourism industry is growing uh, at around. 4.525%. Mm -hmm. And relative to that, in 2018, we grew the industry by uh, over 10%. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, seeing our own performance, uh, uh, we have the ability, the capacity, the capability to, uh, you know, keep growing the industry by over 15 percent. So if we do so over the next five years time, uh, reaching 10 billion revenue uh, target will not be uh, um, hard. You'll be sticking around? Uh, well, whether I'm here or not, uh, if the country uh, tourism uh, you know, has the right strategy and um, uh, there is uh, political support um, and and um, you have the right people uh, to to take the lead. Uh, it is still doable, given that industry is pretty strong, right? Um, uh, because industry itself is doing a lot of uh, you know work. We have some huge local brands uh, that are that are basically talking to the rest of the world as well, mind you, on their own. Uh, so so you have to have someone leading in this effort you know who can supplement complement uh, the the efforts of the industry mm -hmm. uh, so that is what is required uh, so i'm i'm sure it'll it'll uh, fall into place but what we lack uh, in in not just in uh, tourism is that we don't have consistent policy framework mm -hmm. but are you looking at a strategy that could be consistent regardless of government change or change of political you know camp yeah so consistency uh, has been uh, an issue, uh, not just now, but uh, over the past you know, several decades. Everyone you know, has been talking about it. Uh, we are still battling with that issue, uh, which, is, which is true. As far as tourism is concerned, uh, I'm, I'm occupying this seat uh, today, uh, but this has to be a permanent position. And I won't be that permanent uh, man. I, I must you know, be very honest. Why? Are you, are uh, you, are you a political appointee? Well, uh, well, no. I mean, I, I took up this position to serve the nation because I had worked for multinationals for 33 long years. And uh, I was taking a break. And, and that is the time at which this invitation came from the industry. And um, I said no to it 
not just once, few times, but then uh, they kept on talking to me. And then finally, uh, having seen the uh, strategic importance of the tourism industry for the country, uh, as a person you know who stepped down from a multinational to be able to do something bigger for the country, I thought it's it's. Uh, uh, nothing but right that I took up uh, you know this position so with that uh, intention only I, I took it up uh, but uh, that is to you know revive the industry um, and 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 you know come up with a strategy uh, that can you know take the tourism industry forward uh, so I would you know certainly do that during my time mm -hmm. uh, but I have other other plans so you don't you really don't have plans to stick around for too long no uh, as long as uh, 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 you know i i um I'm given the opportunity to to perform, do the right thing. Uh, I will I will uh, stick around. Uh, but if you ask me whether I'm going to be here for the next two years, I will say no. Why so? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, uh, for 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 many reasons. Um, and um, you know, it has to be a permanent position, as I told you. Okay. I would like to see tourism uh, promotions bureau and the Tourism Development Authority having two permanent uh, you know, chairmen. That's the right thing. And, and uh, a permanent managing director for the Promotions Bureau as well. Mm -hmm. Because the continuity is important. Uh, and, and without that, you, know, you will not be able to compete against uh, other nations. Uh, in the very, we are only talking about the crisis, how we can bounce back. But there is a bigger issue uh, you know, outside of that. That is the level of competition in the tourism industry across the entire world. We have these beautiful products, true enough, but we are not the only country that has uh, a similar product portfolio. Other countries also have. So it's all about how you position your, your how you develop your products uh, to start with, and how you uh, you know brand them, how you position your brands, and you know how you uh, communicate uh, you know your brands to the to the target audience. Uh, so one person you know coming uh, staying for uh, one year, one and a half years. Uh, or, or six months doesn't help uh, the, the industry and, and that, that's wrong. Uh, not just the uh, tourism industry, you know, even the other industries where uh, the, the task is, is similar, uh, what you have to do uh, is, is similar. Um, if it is a commercial entity, I think it should be permanent positions. I don't believe in uh, you know this kind of appointments for organizations of this nature. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people um, lost their livelihood uh, following these attacks uh, some of them are still grappling with you know trying mm -hmm. to find work but uh, we're talking about a formal uh, tourism industry and the informal sector mm. of this industry what is what is your view on this how do we bridge this gap well uh, if you look at the central bank figures mm -hmm. central bank will say um, in the tourism industry we have about 400,000 indirect and, and uh, direct uh, mm -hmm. employers right Right, but I totally disagree with that figure, because you know, with this striking us, this issue striking us, uh, we've seen so many lives being negatively impacted. Right, you go uh, to the street, uh, the person who sells uh, king coconut will say, you know, mm -hmm. we have lost uh, volume. You go to uh, a, a fish market, fish market will say, we have no business. Right, poultry farms are complaining about it, and you go to any area, uh, the lives uh, are being impacted. Uh, so my um, estimate is that there is at least two million people uh, indirectly depending on this. When I said indirectly depending, without tourism, they can't survive. That's my definition for it. Uh, how many are indirectly impacted? Impacted the entire nation. Entire nation, because when uh, the tourism uh, revenue is 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 uh, you know stalled uh, or, or pipeline you know goes dry, it creates you know uh, so much economic issues. Mm -hmm. Banks are, are struggling. The financial sector is struggling, and and so many uh, you know issues in the periphery as, as well. Uh, so uh, tourism is is everyone's business from that perspective.
how how do we how do we look at uh, you know if if the central bank says 400,000 only, but there is a larger group that is dependent, mm. even our mm. gross domestic product, a significant amount of the development is contributed through tourism, but um, as as somebody who is always proven through a vision led mm. uh, operation, you have always had a strategy led by vision. You your turnaround in terms of uh, uh, a company that you took over into a household brand. I remember saying this before. Mm. How would you do this to our uh, tourism industry? Because you are, you're very passionate about working mm. for your mother nation. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, with right strategy being implemented at the right time uh, and, and with a collective effort from all stakeholders, I have no doubt that we can bounce back, bounce back better than ever before. Uh, because as I said, uh, the industry is very, very strong. We have you know, great marketeers at the industry level. We, the industry does better marketing than uh, tourism uh, promotions bureau. If you look at uh, the last you know, several years, okay. we have some super brands. Uh, we have uh, some brands you know, that are, one can say, stronger than uh, the Sri Lanka tourism brand. I don't want to mention names here, we all know. Uh, so that's the, 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 the level of strength we have in tourism in Sri Lanka. Okay. So all what we need to do is to bring all these trends together and, and create you know, mega power and market it you know, aggressively uh, for which the industry and uh, the Tourism Promotions Bureau Development Authority need uh, everyone's uh, you know, support, support coming from uh, the government and you know, everyone else. Um, uh, so, so tourism being um, such a competitive you know, industry, uh, tourism should be able to make independent decisions you know, within a certain pr framework. Uh, uh, it used to be tourism board, uh, now it's tourism promotions bureau, is not a department. Uh, so why can't uh, the government have some different processes so that uh, tourism will be able to respond to some of the challenges uh, fast enough? Uh, you said the industry is strong enough, stakeholders, the agencies, but uh, is there political win? Uh, not particularly talking about the government, but do you see a wider consensus on developing this industry? Uh, no, I mean, um, while the industry is strong, um, I, have, I also have seen that they are also not working together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, bringing them around one table and having consensus uh, has not been easy. Uh, I, can, I can understand the reasons for it. That has not been the culture. So we need to create a culture within which the industry will work together. Uh, the hoteliers working with uh, the travel agents and vice versa, and then you know uh, across other groups as well. So that culture has to be created, and 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 uh, for us to be able to create that culture, there has to be somebody you know on top who will pave the way, uh, you know, show the way, and and get them to do it, and that takes uh, and on. And and it's great to hear of your optimism and the positiveness that you have for the industry and the country itself. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. On our show at Hyde Park. We had with us the chairman of uh, the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, Mr. Kishu Gomez, who recently uh, gave away his other position of being the chairman of Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority to solely look into and head the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau in the aftermath of the Easter Sunday attacks that shook Sri Lanka. We'll join you again with another episode at Hyde Park.